This page was created to teach black history. Unfortunately, the American educational system was designed to exclude our real historical account. So we are here to dismantle it. It's time to enlighten those of us who have been kept in the dark. I am a black man who didn't know enough about my own history. So I began to dig deeper and do my own research. Black history is American history. So I want people of all races and cultures to join together to learn our history as one. Here, I will share all of my findings. Please like, follow, share, and subscribe to Teaching Black History. The story of Mary Ellen Pleasant. Mary was likely born on August 19th, 1814. There are various accounts about where she was born and who her parents were, and if she was born free or not. Her mother disappeared when she was a child, after which she lived with Mr. and Mrs. Williams, and was known as Mary Ellen Williams. When she was 11 years of age, she said of the time, I was a girl full of smartness, who let books alone and study men and women a good deal. I have always noticed that when I have something to say, people listen. They never go to sleep on me. She was considered a member of the family by 1839 when she was taken into the home of abolitionists, Uzi Gardner and Edward Gardner. Their son, Thomas Gardner, taught her how to read and write. Pleasant was an apprentice for a tailor in Boston, and she may have met her first husband in the shop. She married James Smith in Boston in 1840. Her husband was an abolitionist, and together they helped people who had been enslaved make it north to freedom via the Underground Railroad. Smith, who had been abusive to Pleasant, died after around four years of marriage. Pleasant was left in a state worth tens of thousands of dollars. It was dangerous work, and she was harassed for helping runaways and ultimately had to leave the East Coast. They were in danger from slavers, as well as subject to prosecution and imprisonment under the Fugitive Slave Act of 1793 and the later Act of 1850 that imposed new penalties on those in the Underground Railroad. She left New Orleans just as she was about to be captured for her Underground Railroad feats. The voyage to California took about four months. The California Gold Rush of 1848 through 1855 provided a unique opportunity for blacks. Since only one out of 10 pioneers coming to the state were women, Pleasant realized that she could seize a very lucrative opportunity to cook and provide lodging for the miners. There was a wrinkle American Southerners also made a run for the Gold Coast, taking their enslaved people with them. There were slave catchers and slave holders who came looking for runaways. When she arrived in San Francisco, word is spread that she would be arriving in San Francisco and she was met by a group of men who got into a bidding war to engage her as a cook. She is said to have had $15,000 in gold coins when she arrived in San Francisco. She managed her money cleverly. The more that she made, the more that she had to share to help people in need. For her own safety, she initially went by the name Miss Ellen Smith rather than Pleasant and was considered by her neighbors to be a white Landing lady and cook. She was Miss Pleasant to former slaves who had worked at any of her businesses, which included livery stables, 
a dairy farm, a tenant farm, and a money lending business. She was careful to keep her name out of Underground Railroad related transactions. However, among other abolitionists, she was known as Miss Pleasant. Among the transactions that she made during Underground Railroad activities, she assisted fugitive slaves obtain safe transportation, housing, and jobs. She funded her efforts through the monies that she had left from her first husband's estate. When she came to California, it was possible for fugitive slaves to be apprehended from other states and blacks who were unable to give testimony in courts. She became a one-woman social agency that provided for the transportation of black men and women in California. Once there, she ensured their daily needs were met until they were employed or had established businesses, both of which she helped them accomplish. She attained legal resources for black people when she campaigned for the end of slavery in the state. She became known as the mother of civil rights in California for her efforts. She helped women of any ethnicity who were at significant risk on their own in the early San Franciscans days by helping them with housing and clothing as well as advising them about how to carry themselves and dress. She also helped women find homes for their children if they could not support them. She left San Francisco from 1857 to 1859 to help John Brown. She was said to have actively supported his cause with money and work. There was a note from her in his pocket when he was arrested at the Harper's Ferry incident, but that it was only signed with the initials M.E.P which were misread as W.E.P. She was not caught. She returned to San Francisco to continue her work there, where she was known as the Black City Hall. When the abolitionist John Brown was hanged on December 2nd, 1859 for murder and treason, a note found in his pocket read, the ax is laid at the foot of the tree. When the first blow is struck, there will be more money to help. Officials most likely believed it was written by a wealthy northerner who had helped fund Brown's attempt to incite an arm and slave uprising by taking over an arsenal at Harper's Ferry in Virginia. No one suspected that the note was written by Pleasant. Pleasant told Davis, before I pass away, I wish to clear the identity of the party who furnished John Brown with most of his money to start the fight at Harper's Ferry and who signed the letter found on him when he was arrested. The sum she donated was $30,000. She has said that it was the most important and significant act of her life. With her fortune and money, she made as a cook 10 times what she could have made in the East. She invested in a number of businesses in California that served the miners, like laundries, lodging, and Wells Fargo. She developed a long lasting partnership with Thomas Bell, a white banker and investor in the East. Her investments in businesses made her and Thomas Bell $30 million. At the end of the war, she invested in the same types of businesses with more luxurious accommodations, which drew the elite. After the end of the war, she began to identify herself as a woman of color, such as in the city of Directory. She stopped working as a housekeeper to have more time to spend on civil rights activities, including housing for blacks, establishing black schools, 
and repelling the fighting against Jim Crow laws. Pleasant successively attacked racial discrimination in San Francisco public schools after she and two other black women were ejected from a city streetcar in 1866. She filed two lawsuits. She won in part due to the testimony of a white woman who had hired Pleasant. She lived the last 20 years of her life in a 30-room mansion that spanned two San Francisco city blocks in 1880. She had 15 people living in her house. There were five members of Thomas Bell's family, including his wife, Teresa. After Thomas Bell died in 1892, the accumulation of events meant that she had lost most of her estate. She still had her investments, but she was cash poor and the courts declared that Pleasant was insolvent. Teresa, who had emotional and mental instability, claimed that tens of thousands of dollars had been stolen by Pleasant and that her husband had been manipulated. When the case went to trial, it was difficult to discern what were Bell's and what were Pleasant's assets because the transactions were so intertwined. The case was not settled by the time of Pleasant's death. She died on January 11th, 1904.